This is Pastor Rick's Daily Hope, the audio broadcast ministry of Pastor Rick Warren. Well, today we continue in our series called Building a Better Future. In these lessons, Pastor Rick shares how we can build a foundation for a better future by following the examples of leaders in the Bible who followed God's calling to rebuild after a time of captivity. Well, you've probably noticed the more grateful a person is, the happier they are. That's the power of gratitude. But it's not always easy to feel grateful. That's why Pastor Rick developed a great new resource called The Power of Gratitude. Go to PastorRick.com to find out more or just text the word DAILY to 800-600-5004. Now, here's Pastor Rick Warren with part one of a message called Enlisting Support for Your Dream." After you have a clear vision or a dream of what you feel God has called you to do with your life, the next step, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, is to enlist others who can support your dream. Now, fortunately, chapter two of Nehemiah's story gives us a very practical model of how to do that. But before we look at Nehemiah's example of how to enlist other people to support your dream, you need to understand two facts about dreams. First, no dream is built without support. No dream is ever built without support. Just like a building needs support, your dream needs support. True success is never a one man show. Anything significant that's done in your life, any great dream will require help from others. You know, Kay, my wife has a message called, it takes a team to fulfill a dream. And Saddleback Church is able to do amazing things because of about 15,000 people who volunteer every single week to use their talents in some capacity. Now, why will your dream require support from other people? Why can't you just do it by yourself? Well, there are several reasons. First, you don't know everything you need to know. Number two, you don't have enough time or energy to do everything by yourself. And number three, you don't have every talent that you're gonna need to get your dream done. You see, God intentionally wired us to need each other. So we'd learn how to work together. Now, Nehemiah could have never fulfilled his dream of rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem by himself alone. It would have never happened. In fact, every phase of the dream that God gave Nehemiah would require assistance, even just traveling back to Jerusalem. Nehemiah chapter two, verses seven to nine says this, I asked the king to help me by giving me permits for safe travel through the territories on my journey to Jerusalem. And I also asked him to supply timber for building from his royal forest. And the king gave me everything I asked for because God's gracious favor was with me. The king even sent an army, sent army officers and soldiers on horses to escort me. Now, did you notice that last phrase? The king actually added uh, an escort service of of officers and soldiers on horses to help Nehemiah get escorted back to, uh, to Israel. When you pray and when you ask God for help, God will provide even stuff you didn't think of or even imagine that you would ever need, an escort. Now, no dream is ever built without support. Second fact about dreams is this, no dream is ever built without opposition. No dream is ever built without opposition. Opportunity and opposition go together. The moment you decide to go after the dream that God gives you, there's always gonna be somebody there to discourage you. The moment you say, let's do this, somebody's gonna jump up and say, let's don't. (laughs) People are naturally resistant to change. They don't like it even when they're living in ruins. And people resist change for a variety of reasons. But dream busters are literally everywhere. They feel it's their job to bring you down. So opposition, listen, opposition is built into every opportunity in life. Nehemiah is gonna show us how to handle opposition in detail in a future message of this series. But in this chapter, it introduces us to a couple of the vocal opponents or critics who opposed Nehemiah at literally every step of rebuilding the wall. Now their names are Sanballat, what a name, and Tobiah. 
Sanballat, and Tobiah. Now, I'm not going to give you the background of these guys today because we're actually going to study their tactics later in a message on how do you handle opposition. But let me just say this. These two men were local leaders in Jerusalem who were not Jews, okay? They had moved into Jerusalem when the Jews had been deported to Babylon, and they hated the Jews. Uh, they were prejudiced. They took advantage of their suffering and captivity. And while the Jews were hurting, they were ruling. And they had made themselves rich and powerful at the expense of other people's misfortune. So when they heard that Nehemiah was coming back to rebuild the city, guess what? It threatened them. In Nehemiah 2.10, it says, Now when Sanballat and Tobiah heard that I was coming to assist the welfare of the Jews in Jerusalem, they became very upset and disturbed. Friends, there will always be people who don't want things to change because it will end their unfair advantage. They want people to be kept in slavery, and they will also be people who don't want you to succeed because it'll change things for them. By the way, how did Nehemiah know, even before he got to Jerusalem, that these guys were going um, uh, uh, to oppose him? Well, he must have sent scouts ahead in advance to uncover any opposition. Remember last week we talked about doing your homework, doing your preparation. Now, because of these two reasons, you're going to have opposition to any dream you have in life, and you're going to need help from others. You need this message today. You need to learn how to enlist the support of others for your God-given dream. Fortunately, chapter 2 of Nehemiah's story beautifully illustrates how to gain support for your dream. You're listening to Pastor Rick's Daily Hope. Rick will be back in just a moment with the rest of today's lesson. You can sign up for Pastor Rick's free email devotional at PastorRick.com. That's PastorRick.com. Did you know experts have discovered that gratitude is the healthiest human emotion? It makes you more resistant to stress and increases your overall happiness and satisfaction. You've probably noticed the more grateful a person is, the happier they are. That's the power of gratitude. In fact, the Bible tells us to rejoice always, pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. It's clear that God wants us to develop the attitude of gratitude. That's why Pastor Rick developed a brand new Bible study called The Power of Gratitude. This innovative Bible study is filled with scripture, teaching, exercises, quotes, prayers, and journal pages. As you go through the study, you'll discover the many and often unique things you have to be grateful for every day. You'll develop the lifelong habit of expressing gratitude to God, a habit that leads to true happiness and satisfaction. We'll send you Pastor Rick's Power of Gratitude Bible Study when you give a gift to help Daily Hope take God's Word to people around the world. Go to PastorRick.com right now to get your copy of this great resource. That's PastorRick.com, or you can text the word DAILY to 800-600-5004. That's the word DAILY to 800-600-5004. Thanks so much for your support. Once again, here's Rick. Now, let me give a little background for those of you just joining us in this series. Here's the background of the story. During the great Babylonian empire, thousands of years ago, the nation of Israel was conquered by Babylon, which is today called Iraq. Uh, most of the Jews were actually deported from their homeland in Israel and taken as prisoners of war all the way over to Iraq or Babylon, where they lived in exile for 70 years. But then the Persian Empire came in and crushed the Babylonian Empire, and under their leadership, the Jews were allowed to return home. But when they got back to Jerusalem, they discovered that their temple, their homes, and the entire city had been destroyed. And the protective wall and gates around the city had all been destroyed too, so they were defenseless to guys like Tobiah and Sanballat. Now, Nehemiah, who was a Jew, had been promoted to working in the royal court for the Persian king. He gets this dream of rebuilding his hometown. So he prays and he prepares and he plans. We've looked at that in the last messages. And then he asks the king to give him permission to return home and rebuild the wall around Jerusalem. The king goes, okay, 
<laughs> lets him go because God had worked in his heart. And now it, Nehemiah heads back to Israel and his next task, what we're going to look at today, is to convince the defeated and discouraged citizens of Jerusalem to help him with the dream. Now, the story of how Nehemiah succeeded in getting others to help him in his dream is found in Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. It is one of the great success stories in the Bible. It really is. By involving other people, Nehemiah was able to accomplish, listen, in 52 days, a project that no one else had succeeded in doing in 90 years. That's a success story. Now, if you're a business person, you really need to pay attention to this series and this message today. So let's look at the steps that you're going to need to follow anytime you need the cooperation of other people in your life, in your family, in your work, in your school, in your business. All right, let's get right into the points. Here's the first step. Number one, wait for the right timing. Wait for the right timing. Ecclesiastes 8.6 says this, there's a right time and a right way to do everything. Now, you know that from experience, that that's true. You ever had a, seen a good idea killed because it had bad timing? Yeah. Timing can make or break you. You know, in baseball, every pitcher throws the exact same ball, five and a quarter ounces, baseball. Every pitcher stands the same distance from home plate, 60 feet, six inches. The difference between a pro pitcher and an amateur is one thing, timing. Timing, the difference in timing is worth millions. Now, the best example of understanding timing is actually the ministry of Jesus. If you go and study the life of Christ, you'll find that he often said, it's not time yet. He actually told his mother when she came and asked him to do a miracle to turn water into wine, he goes, it's, it's really not my time yet. Nehemiah understood the power of a dream having the right time to share it. In Nehemiah 2.11, he says this, when I arrived in Jerusalem, he's just made this thousand mile journey. When I arrived in Jerusalem, I stayed quiet for three days. Now, isn't that interesting? This guy has a huge project, rebuild the city of Jerusalem, build the wall, restore the gates. He doesn't make a grand entrance. He doesn't arrive on a white horse with trumpets and flags shouting, I am here to save the day. He didn't even announce why he was there. He shows up and doesn't say anything for three days. What was he doing those first three days? Um, resting from the long journey? Yeah, probably. Recovering from the journey across the desert? Praying? Probably. Uh, we know he's a man of prayer. Was he watching and observing and listening and, and learning? No doubt. But I, I'm guessing that as a smart leader, he was also using this delay to build curiosity. Now, follow me on this. Nehemiah arrives from the Persian Empire with a royal es escort. He gets there, but then he says nothing for three days. Imagine the speculation and gossip that would create in the city. By day three, probably everybody had heard of Nehemiah. He's using the silence and delay to his advantage. He's creating a hunger so people will listen when he actually shares the dream. Now, you have to choose the right timing in sharing the dream for you. You don't just go out and blurt it out the first time you get a dream from God. And while you're waiting for just the right time to announce your dream, you can do these same things that Nehemiah did. You can re-energize your life, fresh. You can get in shape. You can pray. You can look around, observe, and learn, and get the facts. And you can build curiosity. You start with waiting until the right time to announce your dream. Here's the second thing Nehemiah did, and you're going to need to do this with your dream. Make sure I've done my homework. Make sure I've done my homework. Before you go public and announce your dream to your family, your friends, your neighbors, your boss, uh, whoever, make sure you have all the facts and all your information is correct and current. The Bible says it like this in Proverbs 18, 13. It's stupid and shameful to decide before knowing the facts. 
You see, what you don't want to happen when you're making your pitch or proposal for help and you're sharing your dream is you don't want somebody to ask you a question that you can't answer because you didn't get all the facts. You see, it's not good if they say, well, what would you do if this happens? And you have to admit, I don't know. I actually haven't thought about that. You have to have all the facts and figures to back up your dream ready. You got to do your homework. Proverbs 23, 23 on the screen says this, get the facts at any price. This is Pastor Rick's Daily Hope. We are so happy you've chosen to study along with us today. Now, if you'd like to receive Rick's free daily devotional, go to PastorRick.com and sign up right now. You'll get hope and encouragement from Pastor Rick delivered to your inbox every day. Rick will be back to close out our time today. But first, you've probably noticed the more grateful a person is, the happier they are. That's the power of gratitude. But it's not always easy to feel grateful. Here's Pastor Rick to tell you about an exciting new Bible study he created to help you practice daily gratitude. One of the things that God wants us to do, and he says it over and over in Scripture, is to practice gratitude. Did you know that gratitude is good for us? The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You want to know what God's will is for you right now? It is that you learn gratitude in all circumstances. There's always something you can be thankful for. In fact, I've discovered, and I've read many reports, that experts have told us that gratitude is the healthiest human emotion. Did you know that gratitude makes you more resistant to stress? Did you know that gratitude makes you less susceptible to illness? Did you know that gratitude increases your overall happiness and satisfaction? That gratitude gives your life more meaning and significance? I don't know if you've ever noticed that the more grateful a person is, the happier they are. That's the power of gratitude. So I want you to live with the attitude of gratitude, the attitude of thankfulness. Now, I've put together a brand new Bible study called The Power of Gratitude. And in it, you'll find scriptures and teaching and exercises that'll help you develop the habit, cultivate the habit of gratitude. You'll discover how to stay in God's will, how to defeat discouragement, how to conquer complaining, how to reduce stress, and how to experience God's blessing through gratitude. Friends, I want to help you develop a deep and a profound attitude of gratitude. The world is craving people like this, and you will be able to experience all that God has for you. So today, when you partner with me by giving a gift, a financial gift to Daily Hope, to help us take the certain hope of Jesus to people all around the world, I'm going to have my team send you the Power of Gratitude Bible Study. I just want to say thanks to you. I want to be grateful for you. You know, your support is essential for us taking the daily hope message of Jesus all around the world. So do that today. Send us a gift and let me send you a gift and you'll be grateful and so will we. God bless you. Go to PastorRick.com right now to get your copy of this great resource. That's PastorRick.com or just text the word daily to 800-600-5004. That's the word daily to 800-600-5004. And thanks so very much for your support. Be sure to join us next time as we look into God's word for our daily hope. This program is sponsored by Pastor Rick's Daily Hope and your generous financial support.